Imagine being in pain 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 363 days per year. Your first question would probably be, why 363 days instead of 365? <coughs> well, my answer to that would be that I've removed two days to account for the time where pain has been artificially numbed. Otherwise, I've been in pain 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 363 days per year. I was born with a common problem, an extra bone in my ankles. It usually isn't painful. My right ankle is the perfect example of this. It has stayed quiet, while my left one has given me all the problems and issues. This bone caused me to sprain my ankle starting in the fourth grade. These sprains increased in intensity and frequency, and eventually, <coughs> after trying every non-invasive method possible, such as injections, custom shoe inserts, countless boots and braces, I had to get surgery to remove the bone. Though it fixed the initial problem, a new kind of pain emerged during the healing process. Whether dull, shooting, sharp, or a combination of the three, it was always there and impeded my ability to do what I wanted to do. Whenever I tell people my story, which is paragraphs longer than the snippets that I have showed you today, they are surprised that I'm able to live my life with such a positive attitude. After all, I've been to over 20 doctors, seven or eight physical therapists, and just last year, a needle pierced my skin over 50 times. Before my first surgery, I was taking Advil every single day, and now 800 milligrams is the only thing that touches any kind of pain that I have. However, I think that finding peace and finding hope are two very similar things. I found hope when last year I met a new doctor who specializes in lower extremity nerves, Dr. Stephen Barrett. We found out what my problem was, compressed nerves. In my case, the scar tissue from my previous surgery was pressing on my nerves. Combined with genetic predispositions, this caused me to be in pain all the time but at least I was finally on the way to a solution. The hope continued when on March 30th of last year, I had surgery to fix the issue. I have photos, but they are graphic, so please over your eyes if you don't think that you'll be able to handle it. So the picture on your left is of my common perineal nerve, and the two on your right are of my tibial nerve. However, I found peace when in the three to four years between surgeries, I found new passions, such as photography, painting, music. These things helped me take my mind off of the main problem and open doors and windows to new places that I could go. But more than that, I found my peace by volunteering. Helping people has always been my purpose and passion, starting with my dream of wanting to be a doctor since I was five years old. I started volunteering at my place of worship when I was eight years old. Opening that door to volunteering at hospitals has showed me that though my ankle has given me a lot of issues, it has also helped me learn who I am as a person, a persevering and empathetic girl. I also had the opportunity to do an internship with my podiatrist, Dr. Barrett. At this internship, not only did I shadow him and watch surgeries, but I also learned how to draw up medication, work the ultrasound machines, and work different computer programs. Additionally, we wrote a paper on medial plantar proper distal nerve entrapment. This problem is often misdiagnosed as plantar fasciitis because of the heel pain that it causes. I hope that the paper that I helped write will give people back the hope that they might have lost before. I found my passion in volunteering. Volunteering has given me a purpose. Not only my love for volunteering, as well as my love for kids and interest in anatomy, has fostered my desire to become a pediatric oncologist or a neonatal surgeon. Volunteering at hospitals and with children has not only showed me what this profession entails, but also lets me know that I'm ready to do this job. My ankle has given me challenges. 
However, these challenges have pushed me to become a more compassionate and empathetic person who can connect with others on a deeper level. I hope that when I become a doctor, I, I'm able to connect with people in a better way. I hope that my talk today has showed people that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and that if there isn't one, you can create your own path to the light. You never know what life is going to throw at you, what opportunities and possibilities that life will take you. But just trust and know that these opportunities and possibilities that you might not have expected will take you in places that you may not have expected. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much uh, for the talk. That was amazing. Um, and uh, one thing I, I wanted to ask about was uh, when you're talking about volunteering, this is really interesting because it's something that Chris uh, was talking about in his uh, presentation, uh, you know, how volunteering might be a means of finding peace, how giving love uh, to other people might be a means of finding peace. And so this is all like very uh, other oriented. And so I'm wondering um, what you think about you know, striking a balance between giving love to others, but also, you know, giving love to yourself through, through self-care. You know, do you need to strike a balance there? Or, you know, if you do, you know, how do you strike that balance? I think it is important to strike a balance, but I think that with me, volunteering is something that makes me happy. So I can find a balance helping others, which also helps myself to find balance. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to talk about this idea of uh, finding hope. So finding hope, you said, was really closely related to finding peace. Um, but for some people, um, I think that finding acceptance can also be a key to finding peace. It seems like there might be some sort of tension between hope uh, and acceptance. And so I was wondering, do you think there's a dichotomy there or even some, some sort of tension? And if so, uh, how do you manage that tension? Well, I think that they work hand in hand. I think it's important, I think acceptance is important, but if you do accept a problem that you have, I think you need to be careful not to give up any kind of hope because oftentimes when you accept, maybe you give up, and I don't think that, I think that instead of giving up, you should keep that hope that there will be a solution to whatever problems you're facing. All right, thank you so much. Next, we have another pre-recorded talk, so please enjoy. <laughs>